Hey guys, so this week I've been playing StarCraft II Heart of the Swarm, which if you don't know is an expansion for StarCraft II Wings of Liberty that came out like three years ago. I thought they were gonna like, like, you know, six months or a year later come out, but no, it's been like three years since we played the last version of StarCraft. Well, is this version any good? Does it add anything to the game? Does it change too much? Does it feel like, ah, oh, I'm paying all this money for just this? Well, here's my opinion of StarCraft II Heart of the Swarm. When it was originally announced that StarCraft II's campaign was going to be split into three different games, people were actually kind of pissed off. But after StarCraft II Wings of Liberty came out, people realized like, oh, it's not that bad. They didn't hold anything back. They're just, you know, doing a full epic campaign for each race. So here we are three years later, and we get yet another campaign with StarCraft II Heart of the Swarm, this time focusing on the Zerg instead of the Terran. Now, obviously, the idea of a brand new StarCraft game will get a lot of people to just go, New StarCraft? Huh, uh, just take my money. But what does this new expansion to StarCraft II actually offer you? The biggest thing is a brand new 27 mission story campaign that continues the story of StarCraft II. After the events of Wings of Liberty, Kerrigan, formerly the Queen of Blades and ruler of the Zerg, has been turned back into a human. Which is great because I had all these really confused feelings about finding her very sexually attractive in the past game, so now that she's a human, it's like, less weird. So now Kerrigan must refine her identity as a human being and live with the fact that she's murdered millions of innocent people. But she also still wants revenge for the leader of the Dominion, who is the reason she was turned into this Zerg Queen of Blades. The story runs the same as Wings of Liberty, where you have a central hub ship called the Leviathan, where you can talk to all your various Zerg people and get missions. And the missions are slightly more varied this time around. It's not just build an army and destroy an army. Sometimes you'd be playing like this weird variant of Defense of the Ancients inside the single player, which is kind of fun. And as Kerrigan is a playable unit in the game, you can actually level her up by doing special objectives, so you can change her power so you can kind of customize her to your heart's content. One of my favorite things in the single player campaign is the evolution missions, where it gives you the opportunity to take one of your Zerg units and branch it off into a certain path. You're like, do you want your Zerglings to jump over things, or maybe you can get them to spawn three at a time instead of two at a time. It offers some nice variety into the single player campaign, but none of it obviously translates into the multiplayer. But the single player campaign is also a nice sort of soft tutorial for the new Zerg units anyway, so that you're not completely like, oh, what do these guys even do? Speaking of multiplayer, it's back in all the ways that it was before. You still got your unranked matches and your ladder matches and all that stuff, as well as custom games if you just want to play with people for no reason. And they've got the arcade up and running, so you can play all those new game types that players just like you have created themselves. In terms of the unit balance and changes in strategy that have happened since they've added all these new things and taken away things, I'm completely out of my element there. My competency at StarCraft is terrible at the best of times, so I couldn't tell you how exactly it changes, but I think people are kind of happy with the multiplayer changes, but I, I don't know. Maybe they'll change their mind in three days and decide, oh my god, it's the worst thing that's ever happened to StarCraft. One of the only real downsides I can point to is that the game is $40 for this expansion. It's not standalone either. You have to own a copy of StarCraft II Wings of Liberty, which is also already $40. I really did enjoy StarCraft II Heart of the Swarm. I just... I'm conflicted because it adds stuff. It definitely adds, you know, new units. It changes things around a little bit. I'm, you know, not a StarCraft expert, so I can't say how it really changes the game. But uh, the story campaign is is fun. It's a, it takes you a couple of hours to get through. Uh, you know, depending on how badly you suck at StarCraft, like I do. But you know, it it adds. Uh, you know, for forty dollars, it adds some really nice entertainment value. But it's not that much different than StarCraft 2 has already been. So I, I don't know how to judge the, if you really are into StarCraft 2 and like playing in a pro league or you just want to be really badass at StarCraft, then obviously get this. But if you're not really into StarCraft or RTS and you don't even have StarCraft, you know, I, it's conflicting because it's like $40 for this plus you have to have the original one, which is like $40. So I, I don't know, I mean, conflicted. I really enjoyed it, but it's definitely not for everyone.